my neighborhood is mostly Hispanic, and I grew up, you know, in this like not rich, not poor, but it's it's okay. It's a standard living. So I would just have a lot of friends that were mostly Hispanics or black people, but um, and then I got accepted into this um specialized school for smart kids. And I went to that school, but I didn't know it was all white. So it was a different environment. And when I went there, there was very few Hispanics, very few. There were blacks, but not that much. But it was mostly white people. Yeah, it was, it was a good school. I, I loved everything about it, but it was just my classmates. <laughs> they were horrible to me. I, I don't know. I never did anything. I was just like, they would always make fun of me because of my skin color of um, how I talked because sometimes I'm since I'm like Spanish and English sometimes my Spanish goes into my English words and I'm like whoa when did that happen so uh, they noticed that and I, I think probably they didn't like that I was in an honors class with them too hmm. so they were kind of pissed off none of them would have been my friend and it was very hard like friendship I, I was I was like put in a corner while everybody else was like having social parties and you know events going on and when we would go on field trips I was always left behind and it's like it's I don't know how to say it. it's like I can't focus like you know at that age I was probably like 13 13 around there and, you know you're like trying to act cool and everything and it was very hard for me to grow up in that that community where it's just like they didn't accept you because I was a different race. Because I was like, you know, they they would say things like, I'm stinky or I'm dumb. I cheated on my test and I never cheated. And it's just little things like that, it's just, it gets to you. And it was a new culture. I, I, I never dealt with racism um, in elementary or in my life in my neighborhood. What? But when I went to that, that school it was like racism it was a new word that popped out and I was like trying to look it up on the dictionary and I was like oh if this is what it is this is what I'm going through and like you know when somebody in the class said that there was no racism it kind of pissed me off because I was like yeah today although it's not like as worse as it was before it still is the teachers they were nice yeah I like all of them they were never like they never saw me as like um a different person they saw me like everybody else having an equal opportunity for an education and i was really glad at least the teachers were there in in middle school you're like i will cry like mostly every day because of you know all the it is verbally abused and you know sometimes they they never physically touch me probably because i was a girl and they you know, I was always a crybaby. I would always, you know, tell someone, my teacher. And I had this advisor. I was, like, really pissed off at him because he would tell me that I was a person probably causing it. Yeah, he said, just, you know, it's probably your fault. Just, you know, ignore it, he said. In other words, he just said, just get away from the crowd. Just don't mind it. That's what he said. And I was like, <sighs> like the only friends I Where had, were you to go? Nowhere. Yeah, I was just there and everybody would like still make fun of me and it was horrible. No, well, not all my teachers knew what was going on because it was like there's so much going on and it's like you just probably teachers are at that time were probably worried about what they're doing for the class. I would too. A teacher called Mr. Siegel. He was my favorite teacher but I would tell him like little things because I didn't want to be like the snitch snitch. I was just like, oh, that kid is bothering me. And he would talk to him. And I felt good and bad. Bad because I, I knew I was going to get made fun of by his friends or her friends. Mm -hmm. With the middle school, after all the bullying, I went back to my neighborhood. And they had a high school full of just Hispanics and blacks where I felt comfortable. But um, I, I guess after that experience, I didn't have like that self-respect and, you know, that's very high esteem anymore it was just like oh I don't care anymore you know I, I kind of just started to believe I wasn't worth anything it's like 
racism causes a lot of effects, inner effects, personal, and it tends you to like go to the wrong way. Well, not all the time, but for my case, I didn't care about class anymore. I would cut, I would just fill all the tasks. I would hang out, rebel. Yeah, I was having trouble just because I, I didn't seek counseling. Mm -hmm. Because, I, I, you know, since I didn't have any help from middle school, since I felt like everybody was, like, you know, attacking me and saying it was my fault, I was like, or basically, I didn't have help at all. Mm -hmm. I was like, why should I seek for help when nobody was there to help me? Mm -hmm. You know, I tried in middle school, so I was, I, those two years, I, I didn't seek any counselor, and I don't know, it, it still affects me today. Like... Like, I, I get these, like, little moments where I was like, oh, I think back on my past and, and, like, all the mistakes I made and all the um, the racist comments I, I went through. And I was like, you know, I just cry and I was like, you know, how, how dumb. I wish I was, you know, stronger back then and, you know, but I have learned a lot. I mean, racism, I wouldn't want it to happen to anybody. I, I didn't even want to meet the word racism at all. That's the, one of my reasons why I want to be a teacher. I mm. just want to change. Like, it's a good my, reason. Yeah, from my experience of being a child and growing up, it, it kind of affected me. And I was like, why should I be a teacher? But then I was like, what about those kids that you know will be my age at that time, 13 or whatever? Why would I want them to suffer? Why can't I just give them a, a better relationship with the teacher-student? And that's one of my reasons for being a teacher. Like, when I came to the school, I was like, I was afraid. I had my fears. I was like, oh, great, another trans white school. And I was like, oh. But when I saw a lot of people diverse and everything, but it's mostly white here, so mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was afraid. I was like, oh, I had like with the racism. I have my self esteem down. It is hard to build up that those blocks up and to become strong mm -hmm. so when I went into the class when I saw a lot of you know white kids there and I was like okay and when I saw Deanna come in I was like okay maybe I'm not the only color and when I saw other people come in I was like okay there's only four of us as girls I was like great they said racism is not a problem it's like I'm probably like for me I would be in my mind I'd be like yeah right for years now it's easy probably you know the worst you can get is like oh you look dumb that's it but i don't know i wish i would have spoken up but you know just that fact that i was just traumatized with racism i hate arguments i hate like people trying to change like my words and say no no it's right but i know i'm supposed to listen to other people fine i'll listen but to change what i think no Mm -hmm. And like I, like I said again, I wish I would have said something, but just the courage, I didn't have any courage. Especially when I would have to present and I would go up there, I was like, okay, everybody, why? Oh my god. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna make a mistake. And I would like, I don't know if you noticed, but I would like stop and think. And I was like, oh, let me stop. Just don't talk. Just think for a while. Okay, not talk. So, but uh, when I presented, with Deanna, I kind of saw he was like giving me li little looks. He looked pissed off, and I was like, "Great, I made a white person mad!" Oh my god, I was going like that, and I was like, "Oh, I couldn't concentrate." Like I, I when I feel like a, a person is mad, especially if they're white, I, I can't concentrate. I can't like my presentation. I'm like, "Oh my god, what are they thinking?" Oh, they're probably thinking I'm slow or something. I'm Hispanic. Uh, I I hate feeling this, you know, feeling low, feeling down. It's a horrible feeling. I'm I'm pretty sure. It's like when people say there's no racism, it's because they probably didn't, you know, deal with racism at all. And if it was, they probably was like, well, I'm white or something. It, it just so many experiences, so many things that change people's lives. Those little comments. I don't know, I, I felt that you know a white person was more superior than me. Because um, that's, that's how I felt my whole life. And I was like... Like you can't overcome it. Yeah. No, I can't. And mm -hmm. like still up to today, I like I could still... I could like...
be strong, but you know, my first impression is like, oh, what if this white person is racist? And I, I just put my head down, and my father noticed that, and he said, never put your head down. You're a good girl. You're. I'm proud of you. Don't put your head down. So. You bet.